Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, this is, as usual, a very fun one, and I have been outside to collect a few of these leaves. Now, I did try and go for the ones that have nice kind of veiny backs <laughs> so the veinier the better this is going to work but and i also want to give you a couple of different options of how you can go about this of course there's actually lots of different ways but i'm just going to show you a couple for this one now i have picked a couple from a uh, just a normal tree i don't know what they are and then these other ones to the side these are actually off my black currant bushes uh, my black currants have been picked for the year but they still have these gorgeous leaves so i thought i would try these too now if you don't have real ones you can of course use fake ones and they work perfectly fine i have bought these from the dollar shop and just uh, cheap and cheerful shops they're going to work well too I am using Dina Wakeley paints today. These are acrylic heavy body paints. And all I'm going to do, if you don't have a gel plate or anything that you can kind of make prints with, then I'm going to show you how to do it this way as well. So I'm just going to take a paintbrush and paint this. This is the back of the leaf. And remember that we aren't actually aiming to fill in the entire leaf. All I want to catch is to make sure I have all of the veins covered. All of the bits that are going to stick up and that are going to print nicely and then I'll show you how we fill this in in a little bit but I'm just taking some um, normal cardstock this is the 110 pound Frenchyville brand that I use take a piece of scrap paper and press down nice and evenly over this to get a pretty good print for the first one here I did three colors sort of a dark green blue and then a light green and now it is a bit heavier up the top but these are prints so nothing is going to be perfect I'm taking the same leaf again so you can just keep reusing them reusing them and this time I'm going to do more of a two color blend sort of from dark green to light green all of these colors are going to mix really nicely so that's absolutely fine it doesn't matter and I just sort of glide the paintbrush over it I'm not being careful <laughs> I'm just sort of getting the job done it really is a matter of um, just figuring out what works for you now you may want to try like wax um, watercolor crayons or something and kind of scribble over the back and then add a bit of water and get a print you might I mean there's lots of different ways that you can go about this for me the acrylic paint is just a nice easy option that's sitting there so that one there is a pretty good print again I'm going to show you how to fill these in once they are dry you can also use a gel plate now i have this one here this is a five by seven um from jelly arts and this is a really i really like this is my favorite brand of gel plate i think i can do the most techniques with this brand for whatever reason most brands are similar but um i will say i have a few different brands and this one is definitely my favorite this one i can do the image transfers with whereas some of the others for whatever reason don't allow me to do that so you can go super simple where you are just putting down these gorgeous leaves i'm going to take a scrap piece of paper and pull up all of that paint that is in between the leaves because i don't want a two color uh, print i really just want just the leaves i'm focusing on those today and of course i'm going to turn these into three gorgeous cards all in this video so i know that this video is a little bit longer today but i thought i would just put it all in one video and kind of get it done instead of making it two parts so i hope you're okay with that now when i took the leaves off you could see those gorgeous veiny prints there <laughs> i love that it makes me so happy so all i'm doing is putting a little piece of cardstock down making sure that there is full contact and then i pull the print and this is pretty cool pretty cool that that was just made from some leaves from my garden now i'm just showing you different versions of this and we're moving kind of quickly because i know that you get the gist of it here my roller was actually a little bit tight i think i had squeezed it accidentally somehow so it wasn't rolling very evenly but anyhow once i figured it out it started going good again <laughs> so for this one i'm just using a tiny little patch on my plate i'm just using enough because i want just the one leaf so all i want is that one in the center again you could frame this in so many different ways but i'll make these all into cards so you'll see exactly what i did with them now all i'm doing here is taking away the outside paint then i can lift off my leaf and for this one here and this is where um you just have to remember that everything is trial and error sometimes when you try you won't get the results that you thought you might get 
And when I was doing this one, I was pretty confident it looked like a gorgeous print even when I took the leaf off. But when I pulled up the print, it was a little bit light and a little bit uh, not complete. So that's okay. It means I probably just need a smidgy more paint to begin with. So I got a little bit more this time. Just going to do the same process. Take, put the leaf down, the same leaf that I used before. Take away the paint and then take a print from that one. So it really is just trial and error. You can see that this one even looks like it has a lot more to it. So this one is going to be a gorgeous little print that I will turn into a card soon. So, I mean, maybe something in between those would be really nice as well. That one there is quite dark with a lot. And then the other one is a little bit light and a little bit impartial. So I don't know. We can find somewhere in between. And then I did think if you wanted to, I was thinking of Valentine's Day coming up. I don't make a whole lot of individual Valentine's Day cards, but you can make anything into a Valentine's Day card. And I think a lot of the cards are you could that I already make, you could even just put the a Valentine's sentiment uh, and you would be away laughing. You'd be absolutely perfectly fine. So this one here, I have just created a heart shape using two leaves. And then I'm able to take away the outside paint, then take off the leaves, take a print from this one. And we have a gorgeous... Um, heart shaped kind of ombre color there and one of them's not absolutely perfect but i could always fill that in later as well <laughs> where there's a will there's a way with my uh with my sort of printing now this time i couldn't resist that orange and uh red and actually i did a tiny bit of pink uh just sort of blush pink color right down the very bottom but it kind of disappears i just like lots and lots of these leaves these are just stunning of course there are much more complicated ways where you can do layers several layers of these and then you can kind of make the outside print one color and then the leaf print another color but there is only so much that I can fit in one video and I sort of knew where I wanted to go with these. I want to keep these simple. Uh, often in my life at the moment, I have limited time for card making and it's something I enjoy so much. So I really do just have to pick and choose a little bit. Now here is the print that we did with acrylic paint, just using, just pressing it down with paint on the back. So almost whatever you put over top of this is going to be fine. I am just going to fill this in lightly using some Distress Oxide ink daubers. I'm not even going to ink them up. I'm just going to add the daubers as is. Some watercolor over top of this I think would look stunning. Um, I think lots of different things. You could color them with alcohol markers and make it, you could do anything, honestly. You can really use whatever medium you want to fill in if you don't have a gel plate um, or you can't do some uh, gel printing. Now, at the moment, this has quite a lot of ink and things on it, so I'm actually going to take away and remove just a little bit uh, with some water and a damp cloth because that way I think it just makes it look a little bit more organic and I like the spread of colors a little bit better. Now, I am going to cut down all of these panels. I'm not going to kind of walk you through it because... Um, if you have dies, if you have rectangle dies, or whatever shape, hearts, whatever you want to cut them into, you can most certainly use those. However, I just like cutting these down with my trimmer, and I kind of go bit by bit by bit. I sort of just, you know, cut out the bits that I want and choose the bits that I want to focus on. I don't know why I don't use a die. I just find it easier to come in with my trimmer. For the next step, I'm going to take a little bit of vellum. Now, we are going to work on the first card here. I use the Lawn Fawn vellum. This is a heavier weight vellum. I think it's 36 pound, which means that we can do a lot of things with it, including putting rub-ons on. Now, I know that you've seen these before. I have used, been using these a lot in my videos recently because rub-ons to me are so handy. It's another way that I don't have to have the full stamp set or anything like that. Um, and yet I still get these gorgeous, gorgeous designs. So I'm just looking and seeing that some of these have a green, similar greens in them. Now, that particular one that says happy 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 birthday I think that those greens are going to work well I like that it's a splash of color so I'm going to cut this one out if I cut them out it just means that I have no risk of damaging any of the others or accidentally adhering any of the others uh, when I am popping this one down then I tend to take a bone folder these do come with a popsicle stick uh, inside them and that works just fine too I just like my bone folder I give them a quick rub all over and then I peel from you know, one corner to the other or one side to the other. And then that way I know that everything is 
uh, set and if it's not then you just put it back down and you can rub more and you would never see a crack or anything like that in the rub-ons and that's what I like that they join seamlessly even if you kind of lift it up halfway and it's not quite complete not quite completely rubbed on so then again I'm going to trim this down I am keeping everything super super simple but I do think that this would be a great card for both genders or any gender I think that this is going to work really well for a good range of ages as well so from this paper pad here I have a couple of greens I could choose that would also go with it green is not often a color that I I guess I pick or I work with maybe so um, I like doing something a little bit different this felt good so all I have is going to mat my little um, leaf layer here now I didn't just choose to mat and put some color on top of the paints because they are acrylic paints and things aren't going to react well on top of those so I did use an actual matting layer this time then you could see I just put these letters these uh, rub-ons are fantastic because you can just put um, the adhesive behind the letters they are wide enough to do so and that way all of our adhesive is going to be hidden behind our vellum and yet very well attached so I'm keeping this super super simple that is the first card done and dusted once I have this onto a card base all of my card bases today are four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I just think the white card base brings out the white in between the prints of the leaves so we are good to go here that's card number one done card number two we're moving on pretty swiftly again we're just going simple I am rounding the corners of this one it is cut down already it measures about three and three quarters by five inches or so I have some white uh, ribbon here I always keep white ribbon I find that that way it goes with all the different colors and I'm just going to tie a really simple bow now in the I originally thought I would tie this right around the center but that doesn't look very good you'll see in a minute that when I kind of hold it down it kind of looks a bit weird um, so that's why I tied it right in the middle of the ribbon however I probably should have tied it at one end but that's okay then I have changed my mind I cut off one of the ends of the ribbon and I just put some double-sided tape around the um, sort of the lower third then I just adhered that round that way and I'm going to sit the bow on top nice and easy so there's my little bow and I do my little edges and it's going to sit right in the middle that looks better to me now I am going to also include a little pre-made sentiment here from the Paper Rose All Occasions set. This is super, super easy. It does say happy birthday friend, but just because of where I want it to go and where I want it to fit, I'm just going to include the happy birthday. So I do my little trick here of putting down the four edges of double-sided tape. Then I lift up a little tab of each one and I also have one sticky piece uh, in the middle that's completely exposed. When I have this all lined up ready to go, I press in the middle. You can see I press with my thumb and then I pull out all of the tabs and everything is completely even. It's got all of my sides are uh, adhered nicely and everything is all centered. Then I add some liquid glue and I adhere down my sentiment. I adhere down my little bow. Gorgeous, simple card where the background is still a gorgeous focal point however it has our sentiment and it has a little bit of detail I think I went back later after filming and added a couple of little gems and things to all of these um, but in general you get the idea moving on to the last one I have this gorgeous background die this is the hexagons by Momenta and I have this one that was already in the back of it uh, one of my die cutting tricks is that I always die cut a few and store them in the back that way they're ready to go and I'm more likely to use them I'm taking the card base here the actual card and so I'm keeping the back nice and clean by just having it in a sheet of paper then I'm adding some old paper uh, distress oxide ink just very <laughs> rough just uh, getting on the ink essentially getting as much ink on there getting a decent layer adding some splashes of water which is usually not something that I do all of the time and then I get a very good reaction I'm not sure if it was the amount of ink I put on but uh, and oxides do do this well but I mop this up and there is a great ink removal so now this looks quite stark and crazy for me but I promise once we add over the background it's going to calm down just a little bit I promise you 
Now I'm taking some stacking rectangle dies. Mine are from Hero Arts Infinity Dies, but there are lots of different companies that do them, so go with the one that you get a good deal. I These often come on sale, and so that's why I went for these ones. Uh, I am going to stack two to make a frame. Now I do them, I have that mint tape sticky side up, and then I put one on there, and then I put, position the other one around it, and that way I get the perfect frame. Now here's where I was like, I just need to double check this background <laughs> to make sure because those splotches are pretty bright. So I'm going to bring in this. This actually has stick it double sided adhesive on the back. Just makes it really easy because of the uh, cut of this background. So I, I line this up. This is exactly the same size of my card and it's really easy to line up. So that's my kind of thing. And you can see those splotches aren't quite as crazy once I put on the white background. So I was happy enough with that. I put some double sided tape on the back of my frame and then I line it with a little bit of the vellum. It just so happened that three of those sides uh, worked out really really well but I just sort of angle my scissors and trim behind the vellum ever so slightly even though it's a pretty skinny frame. If you want to do you could use a trimmer or a pair of long bladed scissors would make it just uh, a little bit easier. But then from here, I'm going to keep this super, super simple. Now, not that our background is extremely busy and the blue leaf would definitely stand out, but I really just wanted to kind of um, make it more of a focal point, make your eyes more drawn to that and sort of almost cut out the background just a wee bit because it, it's not a super busy background, but it is a little bit bright and um, there is a bit going on. So I take off my double-sided tape, place this in the middle. You can see that it doesn't detract at all from the background, but it definitely focuses your eye. I have popped the leaf up on some foam tape, plenty of foam tape on the back there, and I can angle it around. Then I have another one of those uh, paper rose sentiments that says birthday wishes, and that is just going to go down the bottom. All three of these cards are super, super simple, but I think they look stunning. So... I had so much fun printing with these leaves and it was a resource that was already there for me. Now I know that it is winter but maybe you can find some evergreens and just to have a play around with what leaves you have and if not then you can go to the a cheap and cheerful shop, a dollar shop, two dollar shops, whatever you have uh, in, at your place and you can use some fake plants as well. Thank you so much for making it through this long video today. I really appreciate it. Links will be down below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.